Episode 10 has one of the weirdest cold openings I have seen. Rosemary recites a spooky tale about the triad of all people, while time plays the role of visual representation. When the triad reached their thousandth birthday, Oleander felt confident, strong, invincible. One night, when Hemlock and Foxglove were sleeping, Oleander snuck away to test her strength. She wanted to be alone, independent of her other selves. Oleander picked the hardest test she could think of, tearing a hole in the fabric of the universe, where the demon world and our world intersect. She made a friend there. A demon friend? <laughs> yes, Parnell. And I'm struggling to find the energy to care about anything on screen. The triad are over a millennia old. It's apparently common knowledge. No one has any inquiries about this. This amazing thing is treated like just another everyday occurrence. The bland ghost story is the star of the hour. It's exhausting. Nothing has any weight. The show refuses to expand on anything. Things just happen, words are being said, and none of it matters. The story builds up to nothing other than the patented High Guardian comedy. If the circle is broken, he will feast on your bones! <laughs> Give me a break. What's next? Light as a trapper, stiff as a grog? What kind of dork tells scary stories at 2 p.m. in blinding daylight? Why are you guys even here? Marshmallows. <laughs> Please clap. If anything, this would be a rather creative way to handle exposition, since time's adventure for the day mirrors Rosemary's story. Oleander saw that the demon was hungry. She snuck away from Hemlock and Fox Club, feeding the demon music boxes, rings from broken engagements. Precious things. If you bring something precious to the grotto and gift it to the lake, you can summon a demon who will give you powers. When you summon the demon, you must protect yourself with a circle of salt, which he cannot cross. Except that it's completely wasted, because time just repeats what's going on right after. You don't even know what you're doing. This plan, it might... Look, I create the salt circle. I stand in it to cast the spell, which summons the demon. I give him something precious. He opens a window for me to speak with my dad. I tell dad, the most resourceful person I've ever met, about the healing waters. He uses his knowledge to replicate the formula. We save the fairy woods. Let's do this once again, from the top, this world. With omnipowerful magic, with teleportation spells, as well as VR technology, does apparently not have telephones, nor any kind of simple spell equivalent. Instead, you have to make a deal with a literal demon in order to make a single Skype call. Why doesn't Time just ask the demoness teacher to hop her over to the fairy woods lickety split? Why do this back alley deal with a random demon when you already have a trusted creature of the darkness right there at your beck and call? Or is that a racism? But of course, Time is opposed to asking for help from anyone. Oh, you stupid son of a- Please, to everyone out there writing stories, can we just let this contrivance go the way of the dodo? Someone shadowing another person perfectly, for miles on miles, and then suddenly getting found out right after reaching the destination, master of espionage one second, 
bumbling dumb fuck the next minute. You're lucky I didn't kill you by mistake. I do appreciate that, but I don't appreciate whatever this is. Ow, son of a broad! Stop shouting. You don't know what lives here. Time. I get that you... I can guarantee you don't get it. You want to help your dad. You want to see if you can save the fairy woods together. As partially showcased, there is nothing to get. Why exactly is time being such a bitch? I get as much of it as I can. You can't hide this from a friend. Roommate. Friend. This single exchange, as someone who appreciates solid characterization above most other things in storytelling, annoys me to no end. If the backstory from episode 7 makes time's motivation into nonsensical temper tantrum, and the climax of episode 8 makes time into a lobotomized crybaby, then this one line completely assassinates the rest of time's character. More specifically, it breaks even the slightest notion of any kind of character development. Take a look at these scenes. Thanks for telling us. Ugh, I hate it when feelings come out of my face. It's okay. We're your friends. <laughs> Listen, I trust you. All of you. I know I've been, like, off. But I need you to trust me back, okay? So, none of them know they were all just statues? The only reason I believe it is because you're the one telling me it happened. And I trust you. <sighs> I'm just glad you're okay. You can't hide this from a friend. Roommate. One of these does not belong. Time has already warmed up to the rest of the girls. They are friends. She and Parsley in particular. Time is okay with asking for help. No matter how much you want to characterize Time as the aloof loner type, this is just blatantly going backwards in her development. Time is not a character, she is a character archetype. The Dark Elf needs to be a cunt, because that's her character. She's just being a Zundere for the sake of it. Because we need conflict. The writers are incapable of following even the simplest through line. But hey, it must be hard remembering things that you yourself wrote. Just allow me to give it a go. Here's a simple rewrite. Nothing else needs to be altered. I'll even dial myself back. Make it extra obvious. No subtext or anything. Just so it fits better with the rest of this shite. I won't put my friends at risk again. I got you all mixed up in this. Because of me. You almost... <sighs> Time. You still don't get it. Whatever horrors you may feel about the future, we all have them. For as much as you care, know that there are people who love and care about you in equal amounts. So... No more nonsense about going into the woods alone, okay? That's how ghost stories always start. In any case, time summons the demon, he rhymes, that's a personality I guess. Wait a minute, flashback. Now as the girls are panicking over Rosemary's idiocy, they are met by this goblin creature. He rhymes, that's a personality I guess. Is this some kind of fetish you have? Magical creatures flexing their lexicon? Moving on, the simple business exchange turns into chaos as the demon manages to rattle time to her core so that she unintentionally breaks the protective salt circle, leaving herself and parsley exposed. And what did the demon say to time to make her so upset? The time is short, the road unbends. Which country's where you meet your ends? Which country? Right. Why should I believe a demon? Which country's corporate big money guys? Ah, elf girl. Your father, Camphor, would benefit from your presence and skill. But your cynicism would get him killed. Killed? No. No, I want to help him. The demon suggested that Time's father is in danger. A fact that Time is already well aware of. Whatever, action time. What do we do? I don't have a reversal spell. Ah! Yo! 
Yeah, we kind of got to kill it. I didn't summon it to kill it. I don't know how to kill Mist. Make it solid. Try magic. I'm terrible at magic. We have no time for low self-esteem. I don't know. The forest bending from episode 5 seemed quite confident. Now there's an idea. Imagine if instead of whatever the fuck this was, Time and Sage had an actual talk about magic and worked on their insecurities as a twosome. You teach me and I teach you. A perfectly valid story concept just flushed down the toilet with a single throwaway line. On a more positive note, surprisingly, I think this is the best action scene in the entire show. There's some actual strategy in place. Parsley distracts the demon, while time weaves a magical net to weaken it. The demon's smoke powers could be scrutinized. But compared to everything else on offer, this battle works a whole lot better. It's not good, but it's the least awful of the bunch. The gratuitous gore mixed with the cutesy aesthetic is still out of place, though. Wait, wait, girls. Perhaps we can work out a... No. Fatality. Ding dong, the demon is dead. And his spooky visage gets immortalized on the grotto's wall. So are all of these skulls failed FaceTime calls or... All this chaos... For nothing. <laughs> Not for nothing. At least we're still alive. You would have been alive all the same if you never ventured into the creepy woods in the first place, you obnoxiously optimistic opioid. We can figure out the blight together, but no more running off and no more secrets. We're friends, Time. So the big payoff of this story is the same payoff as episode 7, as episode 8, as episode 9. Time's character is stuck in an infinite Mobius. She grows closer to her friends time and again, only to push them away in the next episode. Though to be fair, this development seems to stick this time around for the two episodes that are actually left. I can't say anything for certainty. And I owe nothing to the writers. They have soft rebooted this arc several times already. It's not the audience's job to force themselves to be invested if the writers can't keep their own shit consistent for measly 12 episodes. Time's character is frustrating to endure. Her demeanor is not dictated by her experiences. She doesn't grow, she just fills the quota of loner who learns to trust others in the most shallow way possible. Again and again, I can't be invested in this friendship. For all I know, the next chance time gets, she's gonna run off on her own again. This is not storytelling. These fictional people are not worth investment. They are just puppets for the writers to act out whatever planned derivative ideas they happen to come up with. You were right. This was a waste of time. And as always, a massive thanks to each of you for listening till the end. The continued support is very much appreciated. And a special thanks goes to all the supporters on Patreon. As well as an extra special thanks to my 10 euro supporters, Wyland, Jesaja Vanderwatt, and six stars. If you would like to join these fine people, or check out any of my other creative stuff, all the links are down below. Take care everyone, and I'll see you all in the next one.